NASA astronauts Sunita Williams and Butch Wilmore are now closer home. They've departed this morning from the International Space Station on the Dragon spacecraft after being stranded there for nine months. Williams and Wilmore, both former Navy pilots, had flown to the orbital lab on the 5th of June last year. It was supposed to be an eight-day mission. It went on for nine long months. This is the single largest, single longest mission, uh, in fact, the sixth in U.S. history, I'm told. They're expected to make the splashdown in the wee hours of Wednesday morning. But what will life be like for them nine months later? After a long extended stay at the International Space Station, NASA's veteran astronauts Sunita Williams and Butch Wilmore have begun their journey home, bidding a final goodbye to the International Space Station, which has been their home since June 2024. This was their last trip to the ISS. If all goes as planned, the SpaceX Dragon will splash down off the coast of Florida in the wee hours on Wednesday. But a final go-ahead will depend on the weather conditions at that time and the sea conditions off the coast of Florida. Now, according to NASA, the weather so far is expected to be pristine and the recovery teams are ready. The spacecraft has successfully undocked from the ISS at around 11 a.m. this morning, Indian Standard Time, and gradually moved away. It has since performed multiple deorbit maneuvers and in a few hours from now, the deorbit burn will be initiated. Now, this is a very crucial stage which will prepare the spacecraft for its re-entry into the Earth's atmosphere. The descent will take a few hours and as per NASA's timeline, the splashdown should occur around 3.30 a.m. to 4 a.m. Indian Standard Time tomorrow after the parachutes are deployed. But each step has its own technical challenges and has to be precisely executed. Now, re-entering Earth's atmosphere is no easy exercise since a tiny spacecraft has to brace up for intense heating and friction which is generated when the capsule is free-falling at high speed towards Earth. Do you think mankind can build space apartments on Moon and Mars? So do we space think we can be living on the Moon and Mars? So yes. It's, yes, absolutely. I mean, we've proven that people can live in space in microgravity uh, for quite some time in a closed environment. Uh, I think we, uh, like I said, our next step is going to the Moon. However, we need to learn how to uh, be able to stay there for a longer period of time rather than the uh, Apollo missions, which were there for just days. So we're using the space station as a, a stepping stone to be able to do that. And I think we'll be able to understand uh, how to even grow our own food there, which we'll need to do. It'll be a little bit of a gravity environment. We'll have to do spacewalks. We'll have to be able to build things while we're there. We'll have to be able to breathe oxygen. So all of these things we're working on with the International Space Station will take that technology to the moon. And then from the moon, we'll take that, like I said, that technology to Mars. I think we can do it. I look at this room, I look at a lot of things a little bit differently now that I have been in space. I look at how much room there is above us and how fun it would be to, you know, jump off this platform and fly to the back. It's just an example of thinking a little bit differently. And it makes you solve problems differently. It makes your brain stimulated and try to understand a different environment and how to solve problems. So I think um, that is the, the biggest key is we're learning new technology. We're forcing ourselves out of this 2D plane that we live on the crust of the earth into looking at things uh, upside down and sideways and maybe that will help us solve a lot of the problems today. Ma'am, if you get an opportunity to take one special person in space, then who would it be? Oh wow, that's a <laughs> tough question. I, um, I think I would choose anyone who um, had any animosity towards somebody else because once you get up into space and you look down at the planet, um, I think all that feel, feeling of uh, dislike for anybody else would just go away because you would see how beautiful and peaceful our planet is. And it's, uh, like I said, mentioned before, it's hard to imagine any people arguing, not to mention fighting on the earth. And science and technology have developed so much now, and the life of man is risky when, it, when he goes to this space. And robots can do your work, they can also do research on this space, then why are you people going over there? Well, I think humans in space is a necessity. You know, when we have robots on Mars like we do right now, they're not making decisions. That decision, when they're going to the next place, has to come back to Earth, and then they have people interacting to then make the, de the decision. They also don't have all of the knowledge as they just look around and decide what will be the next logical step to do, what would be uh, the next thing that would lead to the next question. And humans there to make those judgment calls, to make those decisions, is going to have to happen. It's also um, how we're going to relay what we see and feel back to Earth. You know, we don't get a feeling from those robots. We only see what they, in their limited view, what they see. 
Uh, I think a person being on Mars and coming, telling the Earth, telling people back on Earth what they're seeing, what they're feeling, will get people enthralled and interested a lot more than a robot. Ma'am, what is your message to the women of India? I don't want to slight the, the, the men in this, in this room, of course, but I think for the women of India, um, I think sort of along the same lines as the boundaries. Don't don't think that those boundaries are real. If you feel that uh, there's more opportunities for men, look back at yourself and, and understand who's giving you those limitations. Probably you are giving yourself those limitations. Maybe the people around you are giving you those limitations, but those are all in people's brains. It's all a perception. It's not real. So I think they can do anything uh, that they would like to do.